it's Pupmeister, and today we are going to be looking at how to create netherite armor or weapons or whatever. We're going to be doing my helmet today. So we're going to change our diamond helmet into a netherite helmet. And we'll take you step by step through every process. So let's get started. Well, let's take a look in our igloo as to what one of the things we're going to need. And one of the things we're going to need is a smithing table right here. This changes your tools, your weapons, your armor into netherite. So you're going to need one of these. These can be found in some villages. But if you can't find one, you can very easily make one. All you need is some planks and a couple of iron ingots. And that's all you need. And you can create your own smithing table. So as I go lower and lower, ah! Well, that was evil. There's a reason we're going lower and lower into the nether. And that is we need to find ancient debris to turn into a netherite ingot. Now it takes four nether scraps uh, or ancient debris to make one ingot. So we need to find in our example today, four ancient debris in order to get our ingot. Now, one other thing I wanna mention, you need diamond armor, tools, or weapons to make netherite. You can't just go from an iron sword to a netherite sword, for example. So let's keep going down. We're looking at about level 13 is what we want to do. Okay, so here we are down at level 12. Now I said 13, but I'm standing on level 12. So that means this block straight ahead is level 13. And that is what we want. So basically, there are two ways, actually three ways, to mine for netherite or ancient debris. And I'm going to cover all of them just briefly so you can see the difference. Okay, so number one is placing a bed. And we don't really want to be right in front of it. So just kind of come off to the side here a little bit. And then right click. And as you can tell, it explodes because, well, can't sleep in another, the bed will explode if you try to do that. So this is the first way to look for ancient debris and check that out. We found one. Now I also like to get rid of all the fire right away because if there is fire to step in, I will step in it and I will burn. <laughs> so I like to get rid of all the fire. So now that all the fire is gone, well, not all, but the ones I can pretty much step in and start burning, uh, let us get to the ancient debris. All right. Okay, so we have our first piece, but like I said, we need four. So the second way to find ancient debris is have a really good pickaxe, like efficiency four or five, and then just keep going like this. And as you break and move forward, you can come across ancient debris as well. This personally is my least favorite, but it is in fact a method. So you can see how big 
the whole is that the bed created. Well, let's take a look off to the side here. Well, unless, of course, we get a ton of gravel, but we'll keep going past the gravel. There we go. Now, the other way is using TNT. So with TNT, you can actually do a couple things. One, you could, of course, just use one TNT and go. But if you use more than one, you can actually create a much bigger hole. And how you do that is just line them up like that. And then you basically light the first one. And the other good thing about TNT is you can go far away <laughs> so you don't get hurt. And you can see four creates a pretty large hole. And I didn't say so in our first explosion over here, but ancient debris is not destroyed by explosions. So that is why, of course, we are using this method. If it did, well, we certainly wouldn't be doing this because we would destroy what we're looking for. Now, the other thing you'll notice is that TNT doesn't give you all the fire that beds do. So we're still, this is way up here. Now we're at level 13 again. And let's just do, I, I usually, when I do TNT, and I usually use beds, I'll admit that is my number one. But if I do use TNT, I usually just use two. You know, and it allows you to get far away. That is the one thing I do like about TNT, is that you don't, you know, really have to worry about getting hurt because you can go away uh, before it explodes. So those are the three methods and you just have to, un you just have to unfortunately just keep going. Another thing I want to mention, if you hold F3 and G, it will show you the chunk borders of where you are at. Now, the reason you might want to do that is because ancient debris tends to spawn on chunk borders. So instead of going through the middle and hitting a chunk border once in a while as you go that way, if you keep hunting right by the chunk border, you are more likely to find some. And unfortunately, it's more likely, <laughs> not guaranteed. The other thing I want to mention really quickly is that there are two biomes in which you will find ancient debris a little easier than the others. Um, actually, three biomes. And those biomes are the nether waste, which is basically, you know, this, all just netherrack. And then the two forests, the warp forest and the crimson forest. And the reason for that is in the basalt biome and in the soul sand valley biome, there's a lot of extra blocks that spawn there, uh, like basalt uh, or soul sand, that kind of stuff. And they will take up, you know, room that your ancient debris could have spawned. So that's why it's a little easier in those three biomes. And I just thought I would share that as well. And there we found another one. It was kind of hiding up here. I almost missed it. And it's always good to check around the location you find one in case there is another one hiding somewhere. But unfortunately, in this case, 
no-go. But, as you can tell, it did spawn near the chunk border. And we just found another one. And there's another one behind it. So there is our four ancient debris. So now we can go back up and I'll show you how to turn that into netherite. All right, now that we are back, let's go back into our igloo here and throw some coal in our furnace because we need to put the ancient debris that we found into the furnace and smelt it. And when you do, you will receive netherite scrap. And it's four netherite scraps which will create a netherite ingot, which I'll show you in a moment. Okay, and there are our four netherite scraps. Now, in order to make a netherite ingot, it's not as simple as like putting four together or something like that. You need four netherite scraps and you need four gold ingots. And when you combine all this, that gives you a netherite ingot. So now that we've created our netherite ingot, there's still one more item we need before we can create our netherite armor. And that is a netherite upgrade template. And those are found in bastions. So now we have to head off to a bastion and find the netherite upgrade template. So there are a number of different bastion remnants. The bridge, housing, stables, treasure room. We have found a bridge bastion here. And the only bastion that is guaranteed 100% to have an upgrade template is the treasure room. And it will be found at the bottom. And I will show you that in a moment. But for any other, I just want to make sure <laughs> no one's going to kill me here. For every other bastion, there's a 10% chance that you might find an upgrade template in a chest. And here we have a lodestone, which is a great find as well. But unfortunately, we did not find any template here. Again, we only have a 10% chance in every chest we check out. So here we found a second chest. Let's see if we get lucky with that 10% chance. And no. But you can find sometimes netherite and netherite scraps in bastions as well. So you might want to go for the template first because that might be one less netherite you'll have to dig up. Ah, so here is another chest. 10% chance. Let's check it out. And there it is, the smithing template. I'll still show you what the treasure room looks like, but we have what we're looking for. So let's get out of here. Piglin brutes, oh, you scared me. <laughs> Piglin brutes are really tough and more than one can take you out. So you gotta be careful. So as you can tell from this angle, it's surrounded by lava. There's gold blocks, a couple chests, a magma block spawner, piglins, piglin brutes, hoglins, all of your favorite friends. 
but this will give you a 100% chance of an upgrade in those chests if you want to take it on. So now that we have found our smithing upgrade template, the very first thing you want to do is duplicate it. Because if you use it, it will be used up and you'll have to go find another one in another bastion and you don't want to go there. So in order to duplicate it, you put the smithing template at the top and then a whole bunch of diamonds like that and then one piece of netherrack underneath it. And that will duplicate your netherite upgrade smithing template. So now you'll have two. And of course, you can do this over and over and over again so that you have lots of upgrade templates to use in the future. So that is definitely step one and what you wanna do before we start using them and creating netherite armor tools and weapons. And now that we have everything we need, we can go to the smithing table. And what you wanna do is put in the smithing template that we got from the bastion. Then you can put in whatever diamond, tool, weapon, or armor you wish to turn into netherite into this spot, and then one netherite ingot in the last spot, and that will give you your netherite armor. And then we can put it on, and there we go. And so ends today's tutorial. I hope you found it very helpful. I took you step by step from the very beginning to the very end and everything you need to do in between. So let's hope you'll have netherite armor, weapons, and tools in no time. So thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a great day. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.